In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, you are all welcome to this moment of brief reflection on the Word of God for the fifth Sunday of Easter year A with Father DC. Today, we shall look at the theme, Jesus, the true way to life. The Christian journey is a journey to the fullness of life and its destination. God has called us to participate in his love, in his joy and peace. And having created us, he called us. But we were unable to reach because of the fall of our first parents. However, God did not abandon us to the power of the enemy of his kingdom, but because his will, which has no beginning but has an end, must always be fulfilled, God sent his son to lead us back to him so that we can participate in this great invitation he has given us as salvation. Jesus is the only means to get to God. He is the way to follow. He is the truth we must believe. And he is the life we must seek. When the currents of the troubles of life overwhelm us and the waves seem to overpower us, Jesus is always there to calm the troubled sea for us. So today we are reminded, my dear brothers and sisters, that Jesus is the unique, the only way to salvation. Now, by the virtue of our being his disciples, we are sure that we are saved. And we are saved in three ways. The first, through the grace of baptism, we have the assurance of our salvation. Secondly, we continue to be saved by divine grace and his mercy as we choose to freely follow him every day of our life. Number three, we hope to be saved on the last day so as to enter the heavenly glory which he has promised us. So the assurance of salvation comes through the death, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Through his life, we can have salvation. He is the one and the only way to the Father. There is no other way. The question to ask ourselves is that, are we saved? Sometimes we think that by simply doing good, we can be saved. Do our good works actually save us? The answer could be yes or no, depending. It is yes in the sense that our good works can save us as far as the unnecessary part of the union with Christ because we can do nothing good without him. But it can also be no in the sense that our good work alone cannot save us without Jesus since he is the only savior. We cannot save ourselves no matter how good we try without reference to him. So we need to have Christ stable in our lives in order to be saved. Dear friends, do not be afraid is the assurance Jesus gives us today. Why does he speak to us this way? Because he knows that in the world we will have trouble. And he wants us to be assured that he is that cornerstone to build upon for our eternal security. So no matter our status in life, we may be poor, we may be rich, we may be big, we may be small, we may have wisdom or something contrary, good health or in sickness. We all have worries in life. Most often we invite these troubles and they are more than willing to come our way by the choices we make. Very common to humankind here for our worries of everyday life, which actually stop us from enjoying life the way God wants us to enjoy. And that's why Jesus is saying, do not be afraid. Maybe you are afraid of losing your job. You are afraid of the lo losing your sick child. Maybe you are afraid your secret doings will come to limelight. It will be exposed, all the bad things. All these little fears which make us troubled may take different forms. It can be as a whole nation, even as a community. Jesus is saying to us, fear not. I am with you. All the troubles in which we fear or the different anxieties we find ourselves in could be summed up in some kind of fear. We are all afraid. We can speak of fear in two different ways. Fear could be constructive or destructive. When our fear is constructive, it is holy. It can lead us to being proactive and our actions become more creative for preventive reasons. In human history, 
Such kind of fear has led to meaningful human development. Fear of flood, for example, led us to construct stronger and storm-resistant houses. Fear of diseases have led us to scientific research to discover some cure for a lot of would-be sicknesses. So constructive fear can be instructor of great wisdom and be the herald of a lot of solutions in our life. But there's another kind of fear on the negative side. It is destructive fear, which has a lot of destructive effects in our life, as the name suggests. It can lead us to deterioration of our emotional state. It can make us more nervous. It can cause us into unreasonable behaviors. And in fact, such destructive fear can lead man into complete impotence. We become vulnerable to a lot of vices since our minds cannot think properly, our bodies cannot act adequately, and anything can defeat us. And that is precisely why Jesus tells us not to be afraid. It is a destructive fear he's talking about. When we are afraid, we must not allow these fears to freeze us into immobility. In the face of fear, we need to take a calm and rational position, which can build our attitudes and have a strong trust in our inherent power to face our fears so we can move forward constructive actions with a strong belief that God is with us. And this is what Jesus wants us to do today, my dear friends. It is to such positive and constructive attitudes in the knowledge of God's presence that Jesus speaks to us today, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe God and also believe me. In my father's house, there are many rooms. We need to believe God is with us in order to overcome the deception of fear. We may not be able to see him, but he is right there with us. As much as we do not see the oxygen, but we believe in his existence as we inhale. Or electricity. We cannot see it, but when we see light, we know electricity is around us. So is God with us. God is with us, we need not to be afraid. The promise of Jesus is that he would save us in whatever trouble we may find ourselves in so long as we remain faithful and committed to him. So we need to call upon him, my friends, with strong faith, and he will deliver us. He has gone to prepare many rooms for us. We must call upon him not only in the time of trouble, but always. Be a prayerful and a dedicated Christian. So we see today in the early church, the disposition to prayer, which the disciples were so dedicated to doing the work of God and they refused to serve tables. But dedication to his word and deacons have to be chosen to take that part of the work. So when we are prayerful, troubles become a spur and hinge to go to the Lord Jesus because he is the cornerstone as we hear in the second reading, whoever rests upon him will never be disappointed, will never be brought to shame. When we come to the Lord, when troubles confound us, he will give us the courage to face the problems which cause our fears and motivate us to use the available resources at our disposal to overcome our difficulties so long as we have our trust plunged in Jesus. When we invite Jesus into our troubled lives, we shall be able to bear our ill. The worst cannot destroy us. Even when the world is collapsing, we will not be crushed by it. We shall turn every stumbling block on our path into stepping stones. And that is the assurance Jesus gives us today. And so, my friends, let us be courageous. Trust Jesus is with us and his plans for us are life and not destruction, so that we can approach his throne of mercy with confidence. And as we do that, may the Lord give us the graces to do his will through Christ our Lord. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do have a wonderful Sunday celebration and a blessed week ahead. Never forget, Jesus loves you.